let's get into how we're going to actually create an interactive um, Figma component out of this static screen design that we currently have. So you can see we've got the sidebar, we've got the navigation links, we've got some dummy content, but we have absolutely uh, no interactions baked in, nothing is set up as components except the icons, which I'll explain in a bit. Um, and pretty much this is just static, it's useless in a prototype. So how do we go ahead and turn this into a sexy, functional, interactive component that we can begin embedding in our prototypes and handing over to developers, etc. Um, the first thing that I think we should really do is think about how we're gonna structure our sidebar component. So luckily I created a pretty simple one for the sake of expediency, which basically consists uh, of a list of links. Um, these are the nav links and uh, a logo and that's it we don't have any user profile we don't have any notifications or search or anything like that if you do you, you might have to rethink how you're going to structure it and think a bit more carefully in terms of auto layout but for us basically all we need is these grouped together um, and the interactions for these they're the only interactions we really need to support so let's go ahead and start building those out um, so the first thing i'm going to do is Go ahead and command D our link list over here. So these are all of our navigation links. Um, but for each one of these, we want two additional states. So we want a hover state and then we want an active state. So the hover state being um, the visual differentiation when you actually mouse enter this area. Um, and the active state, i.e. this one's clicked and we want to give the user some feedback that this is the part of the application they're currently positioned in. Um, and each of these require unique styling. So for the hover links, um, I don't think we need to do anything particularly wild. Um, we just want to give the user an indication that they are hovering this area, just some immediate feedback and confirmation of their behavior. So I'm just gonna shift the background color to something a little bit lighter. And I think that really is all we need for the for the hover interactions. Um, for the actual active links, I think we can be a bit more aggressive in terms of styling and be a bit more creative. So again, we're gonna to change to the lighter background, but we're gonna change this subtle text color to white. I think this was detached somehow. Yeah, we're gonna change the subtle text to white. And we're also gonna go ahead and grab all these icons and we're gonna change them to this primary blue that we've got saved. By the way, the, the, the color choice is pretty arbitrary. You can choose whatever color choice um, fits in with your particular use case. Um, I saved stuff as colors, uh, color styles before I started this tutorial because actually I've recorded this like three times. And on the last time that I did it, I actually realized the recording audio fucked up. So um, apologies if I sound a bit grumpy. I'm genuinely not, just a bit tired. But so we've got these navigation links and we've got them bundled into the three categories we need, which is sort of default, hover and active. And we've also got um, them divided into the actual navigation app area. Um, you know, the different navigation areas uh, that the links will carry you through to. So basically we can think of these as properties. So one property would be like nav link literally and one property could be interactive state. So the next thing we wanna do is actually turn them into components. And I'm gonna do that with command option K. So just click on one, each one individually and you can just see it transform into a component. It's a little bit tedious to be honest. Um, I'm not really sure if there's a quicker way to do this. Actually, I think doing it here is actually a bit bit quicker. If we do it from the inspect panel as opposed to the um, actual main screen. Cool, yeah, done that. So these are all now components, but we want to combine them as variants. So you can literally drag them off, dra drag over these components, make sure they're all selected and just click combine as variants. And then we have this beautiful variant set called nav links. I'm um, going to apply a background for no other reason than I'm um, slightly OCD. And this is really the fundament of what we're going to need to create this interactive sidebar. So if we go back over here, 
we can actually let, let's sort out the properties first so as I discussed earlier we're gonna have the navigation link property and we're gonna have the interactive state property so if you look here we've got this massive conflict because there's only one property which is being propagated over 21 instances so let's first define our properties so navigation link and we'll add the other property by clicking here adding property and we'll call this one interactive state and then we'll go ahead and just copy the nav link names uh, locations this inline editing is really really nice I'm really glad they have this feature saves a lot of time so this is your tickets and then finally applications and what I'm going to do is just go ahead and drag out each row and make sure that it's set to the right link value. So this one's your tickets. Your finances. Your security. Your products. Locations. And yeah, audio devices. Um, then I'm going to drag over this row and just overwrite the default state to the hover state. And then for the final row, I'll overwrite that to active. Once we've done that, if you click on the, the variance here again, you're gonna see that this error message we had in regards to conflicting variance has disappeared because each one of these individual instances has a unique combination of properties. So it's like seven times three. Um, and we're good to go. So now all we need to do is embed these newly created um, sexy components uh, and replace these old nasty static frames so let's just delete this one go to assets and drag this bad boy on make sure it's centered yeah I think 48 pixels is all right what's the spacing the spacings 12 so what we can do is just delete these We'll just Command D, put it down 12, and then Command D again, it will remember the spacing, and we can just flick through all of the navigation property values that we just defined. Um, what I'm gonna do now is group these again. I'm gonna hit Shift A to create an auto layout frame around them. Ensure they've got 12 pixel spacing, which they do. Um, and then I'm also gonna create an auto layout with the logo. Again, Shift A, it's 48 pixels as we discussed, and I'll just center it out because it looks a bit better. Um, and then I'm gonna create an auto layout, turn the actual sidebar itself into an auto layout frame. Just toggle that on. As you see, there's some weird stuff with the bottom padding so I can just pull this down to the full length of the screen um, this in turn will change this to fixed which is totally fine um, and now this is all ready to start inheriting the interactions that we're about to define here um, this is a bit clunky I'm not sure if there's a quicker way to do this by bulk but essentially what we want to do is click on prototype here I'm not sure if you're familiar with interactive components if you're not you're probably familiar with um, creating interactions between screens but here we're actually going to do it within a component set which is even cooler so all you have to do is take this default one we'll drag it to the hover one and we'll just say this is the interaction we want while hovering we can then define animation I'll use smart animate ease out let's say 150 let's say 200 um, and then from the hover state, we want it to be able to toggle the active state when you click on it. So on click, that's fine. And then if you click on the active link, we want it to circularly take you back round to the default state. So if you want to deactivate it, you just click on it again, which is fine. Um, by default, it's set to a click interaction. You have to manually override for the hover, um, but the actual animation properties that you define here sort of save and propagate so we've decided we're going to have 200 milliseconds smart animate with ease out and that will just automatically load now so if i drag this you see by default it's click just override that to hover 
but this is all maintained. I'm just going to do the hovers first, because they're a bit trickier. So while hovering, while hovering, while hovering. <laughs> I'm sure this is really like exciting to watch, but bear with me. Um, and then these are all clicks, which is super easy. Don't really even have to check the panel. So those interactions are now baked into this variant set. Um, instance of this variant set are baked into this. It's not componentized yet, but this frame. So hypothetically, if we launch this in the present window in Figma, we should be able to see those interactions live and functioning. So let's launch the, the prototype by clicking the present button. And here we have it. I'm just gonna hide the Figma UI moment of truth yeah now we have these 200 millisecond um, transitions between the default and the hover state and if we click we'll see it transition into the active state click again returns to default so you have a fully interactive sidebar in what was that less than 10 minutes um, I hope this is useful um, I hope that you can use these in your own designs and when you're doing prototypes we've been doing a lot of hi-fi prototyping at my job recently and people seem to really love it this um, additional level of complexity in our prototypes and realism and it really brings things to life so thanks Figma and thanks for watching please make sure that you like and subscribe leave a comment if there's anything you'd like to see in upcoming videos do that um, and thanks again it's been a pleasure